Hello. I am doing this episode. I'm not sure how it's going to come out, but it will be raw. It will be vulnerable. And I will be explaining why you have not heard from me and why I ended up taking a six week hiatus from the show. If you're watching this on video, I look like absolute shit right now. And I could have put makeup on and been camera ready, but I just said, you know what? I've been thinking about this show and this episode for two weeks, maybe longer. I'm losing track of time, but I just have to do it. I have to do it. And I literally finally just cried uh, on my way home a little while ago and realized that this episode is important. Other women I know need to hear it. And I'm just going to let it flow. I'm just going to be me. And um, I'm not going to care about being perfect. And I'm not going to care about being put together because this is something that I want to share, hopefully, in order to help other women that are feeling the same way. So let's start at the beginning. Six weeks ago was the last episode of the Make Room Show, and then I did not plan on taking a six-week hiatus. However, it did end up that way. It started out where I was feeling really just burned out from so much on my plate professionally, and I was heading out very excited to spend a two-week vacation in Florida in my happy place to have time with our kids. We, Josh and I went down and we spent two weeks going back and forth between each kid. Um, and it was a great trip. There was some, some stuff that happened as far as like things we needed to take care of. We needed to buy, you know, Bryson a, a car. That's always stressful. We had some, a couple little repairs at our place down there, just silly stuff. But, um, overall it was, really fun. We actually celebrated my sister's 40th birthday there. So we had our entire, almost our entire family down in Florida at the same time. And when it was absolute blast. So we had a lot of fun. We spent time with friends, family. It was a great getaway. I came back into town and the next day I started my annual consignment event, Mother Time Marketplace. For those of you that don't know, I've been doing that for 18 years. It's a community event and it's something that I love. So I came back, went right into that. The following week, I was busy making sure that everybody was getting paid and we have a lot of consigners that we have to pay and I was wrapping up. So March is usually um, a busy season season for me. I always have an event in March. And on top of that, you know, I'm running a lot of other things. And so I was um, planning on getting back to the podcast, but it was just like, I don't know. I didn't, I just wasn't feeling it. And I guess I just burned myself out. And so lo and behold, there was something brewing that I didn't know was going to happen. And it has made me rethink everything. So on April 1st, I was driving to work and I was just driving kind of like almost like a country road. And there was a man go driving to a stop sign. And I, in a split instant, I knew that he wasn't going to stop and he ended up running the stop sign. And I was a couple of feet away from um, T-boning him. And I knew that I was going to T-bone him if I didn't do something. So I ended up going off the road. And when I went off the road onto um, the right shoulder, I was trying to get out of the way. Um, so I didn't get hit and I didn't hit him. And I looked up and there were two telephone poles right in front of my car. And so there's like the ground wire that goes into the ground. And I clipped that ground wire and it just destroyed the side of my car, cut off the side view mirror, you know, it was, you know, bumpy. And I looked up and I saw those two telephone poles. And in an instant, I just thought to myself, close your eyes. This is it. And an instant later, without even consciously making a decision, my steering wheel cranked to the left 
And I barely, barely missed these telephone poles, went back into the road. And I remember thinking, please, God, don't let there be anybody coming down the road because now I'm going to get T-boned. And by the grace of God, crossed two lanes of traffic and ended up in the other ditch on the other side of the road and missed a tree and my car finally stopped in the mud. Um, I, you know, I didn't even realize all of that until days later, because when you get into an accident, you're just so in shock, um, that you just kind of go into this autopilot adrenaline thing. Um, the man that ran the stop sign actually felt really bad for him. He was on the way from, um, to go to the hospital to see his daughter who had just had surgery. And so we, you know, we did all those stuff with the police and everything. And long story short, my car was totaled and my husband, when, you know, I got a hold of him, finally, he said, we need to go to the urgent care. And when I got to urgent care, they were very concerned because my blood pressure was 189 over 128. And they immediately, you know, obviously I was getting sore by the minute, um, was having jaw pain, neck pain. And they said, with all those things combined, we're very concerned. You need to get to the emergency room. I went to the emergency room, spent the rest of the day into the night there. Didn't get much care, to be honest with you. And finally, I just said, this is, you know, I got to get home and eat. I hadn't had a thing and I just felt so drained and they still didn't, they didn't really figure out what the blood pressure was. So I have spent the last two weeks going to doctor's appointments, cardiologist scans on my body. They still haven't figured it out. And one of the things that has been an even deeper realization through the whole process is the fact that I've never had high blood pressure. I'm a person that doesn't take any medicine. I live my life very holistically and I feel like I know my body and I feel like I can always figure it out. Right. And I also know that things don't just happen, that there's always a reason for them. And so what I really wanted to share with you today is just kind of what I've been processing. It's still, it's still going on, but what I've been processing since this day has happened, this moment where I literally thought I was going to die and I didn't. The police officer was even like, he's like, I don't know how you're here. This is a, you know, this is a miracle. And I know it was, and I know that God saved me and I know God protected me, but I also know that God got my attention. And so one of the things that's really come, the first thing I thought is to myself when I was ready, you know, if I had died that day, what, how would I feel? And I think what was interesting is when I saw those poles coming toward me and I just closed my eyes, I wasn't afraid. I really thought this is it. And I had no regrets. If that had happened that day, that my biggest regret would have been to leave my children and my husband behind. Um, but I know without a doubt, I have loved them to the very, very best of my ability. I have put everything I've had into loving them. And I feel like I have just no regrets professionally either. I've done, I've followed dreams. I've followed purpose. I've been able to wake up every day and live out however I want my life to look like when it comes to business into my career. And for that, I'm so grateful. And for that, I would, I would tell any, any person to live their life that way if you can, because it is a gift. It's something that comes really, it comes, it's not easy. It's hard to be an entrepreneur, but there's so much freedom and creativity in purpose and alignment in it. And it all stems from what your soul is going through every day. It's almost like as you evolve, you know, your brand and your business evolves. And I have definitely felt that every step of the way. Um, so I, I wouldn't have any regrets. I would be okay with that. But one other thing that has hit me is that what is all of this, you know, work for work that I've done and work that I continue to do if I don't have my health. And with having these issues ever since the accident occurred and, you know, 
high blood pressure and symptoms of that and the feelings that I have to deal with every day and the uncomfortableness and the pain and the, all of that has really been draining on me and has really taken its toll. And it's really come, I, you know, it's funny because I have had a time now to think this through. And one thing that is sticking out to me is that I need to do things a different way that the old way does not work for me anymore. I didn't plan on it. I could feel it coming before. I kind of was leaning into it, but this has really made it clear for me. I'll I'll tell you this perfectly. I was at my actu- acupuncturist and she said to me, "If you are you worried that if you fell apart, everything else would fall apart?" And I said, That's literally how I feel. And I know there's women listening to this show right now that you feel like that every day, like you can't fall apart because if you did, everything else would fall apart around you. And that's a scary place to live because for days and days after this accident, I could feel myself wanting to have an utter effing meltdown, like cry my eyes out, right? Ball like a baby. And I could not do it because The first day when it happened, I could feel the tears. I was scared. I wanted to do it, but then I was taking the car, dropping it off at the collision shop, calling the insurance company, dealing with the police officer at the, at the scene. And, you know, and then I was worried about the guy that I almost hit, even though it wasn't my fault. I felt bad for him because he was going through a bad day. And then I was next thing you know, at the urgent care and then the emergency room and then days of doctors. And I just feel like that's, that's a problem when you know, you need to let emotion out and you just keep moving and you don't let it out. So that's one problem, right? I'm sure you can relate. Definitely hit me up on Instagram. Send me a message if you can. I, I cannot be the only one, um, that feels like this, but I feel like it's the universe, it's God, it's whatever you want to call it, telling me you got to take care of yourself and you have to slow down. I cannot tell you the amount of people, friends, clients, family members in the last couple of weeks that said, you you need to slow down. And I have come to the realization that I am a massive striver and I'm a total type A personality that always has another goal and another goal and another goal. And it has served me to a certain point. But what is it all for? If you aren't healthy and that's where I'm at now. So I was having this discussion, um, with the two girls that coach and host the focus retreat with me. And actually it started out with Lori Beth for, and you, if you followed along the focus retreat or you've listened to my podcast, you know, that the two other coaches are Amy and Lori Beth. And I said, you know, I don't feel like going on social media, I don't feel like doing my podcast right now, to be honest with you. I don't feel like doing any of this. I feel like I just need to take care of me and I need to process my emotions and I need to figure out what this was all for and what is, why is God getting my attention? What am I missing here? Because clearly something needs to change. If I'm walking around with high blood pressure now, I feel like, you know, that probably has to do with me being in the fight or flight mode still. And how am I going to decompress? And I need to take care of my body first. And so I was talking to her and I said, you know, it's just like, I just want a permission slip, just a permission slip to take a break and not have so much on my plate. And she's like, yeah, I would like that too. And we had this deep conversation about it. And then like we always do, we let Amy in on it. She was somewhere and we said, you know, Amy, we really want to talk about this more with women. It's very important. Like, and they both were like, we give you a permission slip to not have to do the social media right now, to not have to show up every day in the public eye and like push out the stuff that is hopefully going to bring you business and you know, grow your brand and make sales and put money in the bank. And it's like, we just said, yeah, I'd kind of like to take a break. And then everybody started talking about it. And now it's been over a week and we have ironically, like the universe does, it shows you signs, right? When you, I feel like 
we're always in a collective thought pattern here on the earth. And so if one person's feeling a certain way, chances are there's a lot of other people feeling the same way. And that's really why I wanted to do this episode. I wanted to do it because I owe you an explanation of why I took a six, six week hiatus. Um, and I also owe it to you to share this story. Hopefully it can help you. Don't wait till you have a near death experience to get an aha moment and say, maybe I could slow down. Even my own daughter, Ransley, she was telling me, you know, mom, you just need to figure out how to be in flow more and to increase your feminine energy and decrease your, you know, balance the masculine energy with the feminine energy. Because when you're a boss and when you run companies, you tend to really feel a lot of masculine, masculine energy. And so I know this about myself. I need to increase the feminine and I need, need to increase the flow. Um, so if you are listening today and you're like, if any of this resonates with you, I mean, I'm, I'm here to hopefully, even if it helps one person, I know that's cliche, but that's how I feel. If one person's listening, it's like, oh my gosh, this is how I feel. I want to give you a permission slip, a permission slip that says, even if you're in business and even if you have lofty goals, and even if, you know, 2024 was a year you set the bar high and you said, now I'm going to make even more money or I'm going, going to grow this or grow that, you don't have to do the every single thing that you think you need to do. I actually, during this hiatus from most social media, I barely have posted on social media and the podcast, I've gotten one of the biggest speaking engagements I've gotten since COVID, um, one of the biggest paying ones then followed by another one. And I literally did nothing to, to get it right. No physical, no physical work from my part. It was a person that, you know, reached out that knew somebody that knew me before and so forth. And it just proves that it, there can be ease and there can be flow. And my brain has always said, no, you can just, you have to keep on working harder and it will come that way. You have to cross all your T's and dot all your I's and make sure that you have everything in the, the funnel and work it, work it. And doing nothing on social media has actually been proven to me now that it doesn't really make or break my business, but how I feel about the work I do and how I take care of myself and how I feel about life right now does drastically affect my business. And I can tell you that right now I feel more gratitude than I have felt in a long time. And, you know, I'm kind of ashamed to say that because I'm always grateful for things, but this is like deep, deep rooted gratitude for the littlest things and everything, the big, the little, the in-between. I'm just so grateful. And I feel like even though my body's going through something right now and it's physically screaming that it's stressed and it's in fight or flight, my soul is smiling. My soul is happy. And I don't know, it's been a while since I felt that and I think I didn't feel it because I was too damn busy, too damn busy to feel it. And it's ironic that all of this is happening during the first year of being of what I like to call an open nester, because when, you know, and I've said this on the show before, nobody prepares you for that open nest first year. Like you are grieving the loss of your children in the house. Like you are grieving what used to be and how everything was a certain way. And now it is different and you miss your kids with all your heart and soul and it physically hurts. But in it, I'm realizing that there is space, right? This room is, or this show is called the make room show. And it's right now, I feel like I'm making room for me. I'm making room for my soul and my spirit that is sometimes pushed to the wayside to take care of other people. And there's no other excuse now. I have been awakened to the fact that I need to do this. I've been given the space to do it and I need to make room for me and for my health and for my spirit and my spirit knows it. And I feel like that is what is making me happy. And so I hope that this episode reaches you and I would love more than anything to just 
if it hits you, please just take a second and let me know because it's hard to come on and be vulnerable, but it's worth it if it helps others. Um, I just got off the phone with my assistant and I said to her, I am going to use the next two weeks to figure out what all this means. And I hope to be delivering more of the story as it unfolds to the, you, you, the audience, the people that listen to me, I love you so much. And you, you deserve this insight. And I said to her, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what is brewing, but I know it's going to be big and it's going to be different and it's going to feel easier. And so if you don't see me on social media that much right now, and there's not all these professional posts, there might be posts of just me and my friends or me and my kids or me and my husband, because I really just don't care anymore. I just feel like we're all striving and running a rat race with this, these things that we're supposed to do every day. And the list is getting longer and longer and we're not getting happier. And that's a problem. And so slowing down is actually making me happier. Slowing down is actually getting me excited about life again. And I feel like it'll, it'll all come full circle. Uh, it'll benefit me in some way or another, but it doesn't have to look like it always looked with this busyness, right? And the projects and all the things, it'll still be there, but it'll look different. And if I don't feel like showing up on social media, I'm not going to show up on social media. So I took that permission slip from Lori Beth, and now I'm passing it to you. I want to give you a permission slip. What do you not feel like doing anymore? Is it social media? Is it things in your business? Is it something that a committee that you're on at school? Is it carpooling? I mean, what is it where you're just like, I don't want to do this right now. I need a mental break. I need to pause. I need a hiatus. What is that? I'd love to know. And if you need a break from it, I'm telling you right now, here's your permis permission slip because somebody has to give it to you and do not feel guilty for taking advantage of it. Take that slip and run like the wind because you deserve it. You need it and you deserve it. I love you so much.